Hello students, welcome to Teach You Smart. Today, we are going to open up a new topic. Direct and inverse proportions. In our daily life, we have seen many situations, like when the speed of car increases, the time taken to cover the distance decreases. When the amount deposited in the bank is more, interest earned will be more. Or, when the amount deposited is less, the interest earned will be less. Yes, here we can see a variation, or a change. The change in one quantity leads to a change in the other quantity. So today, we are going to see the concepts of these changes or variations. A group of students were playing on a ground. Each of them holds a set of three balls. The first student come forward and put the balls into a basket. Then the second student come forward and put the balls into the basket. Continuing like this, how many balls are there in the basket? When the tenth student put the balls into the basket, here each student holds a set of three balls. When the first student puts the balls in the basket, the number of balls is three. When the second student put the balls, then the total number of balls is six. When the third student put the balls, the total number of balls is nine, and so on. From this table, we can see that if the number of students is one, two, three, then the total number of balls is 3, 6, 9. Did you find any relation between the number of students and the total number of balls? Let's see. If the number of students is 1, then the total number of balls is 3. That is 1 multiplied by 3. If the number of students is 2, the total number of balls is 6. That is 2 multiplied by 3. If the number of students is 3, the total number of balls is 9. That is 3 multiplied by 3. In all these cases, we can see the total number of balls is 3 times the number of students. So, if the number of students is 10, the total number of balls is 3 multiplied by 10 equals 30 balls. Here we can see, as the number of students gets increased, the total number of balls also increases. Conversely, if the number of students gets decreased, the total number of balls also decreases. In this situation, we can say that the total number of balls and a number of students are directly related. That is, the total number of balls varies directly with the number of students. When the number of students doubled, the total number of balls also doubled. When the number of students is tripled, then the same thing happened with the total number of balls. If we take n times the number of students, then we get n times the total number of balls. That is, number of balls vary directly with number of students. We have total number of balls equals 3 multiplied by number of students. If we divide this equation by 3, we get 1 by 3 multiplied by total number of balls equals number of students or the number of students equals 1 by 3 multiplied by the total number of balls here we can say the number of students varies directly with the total number of balls that is these two equations are same
In general, if one quantity x varies directly with another quantity y, then we can also say that y varies directly with x. That is, they are in direct proportion. And we expressed it by using the proportionality symbol. That is, x proportional to y or y proportional to x. Here, the total number of balls is directly proportional to the number of students or the number of students is directly proportional to the total number of balls. In the case of total number of balls proportional to number of students, multiply the RHS with a constant to remove the proportionality sign. That is, total number of balls equals a constant multiplied by number of students. And this constant is called non-zero constant of proportionality. Here the constant is 3. That is, the total number of balls equals 3 multiplied by the number of students. Total number of balls divided by the number of students equals 3. In the case of number of students proportional to total number of balls, we can write number of students equals 1 by 3 multiplied by total number of balls. Here, the constant is 1 by 3. Or, number of students divided by total number of balls equals 1 by 3. So in general, if x and y are in direct proportion, then x by y remains the same or constant. That is, x is proportional to y, or x equals a non-zero constant, k multiplied by y. x by y equals k. If we take the ratio of the number of students to the number of balls in the basket, we get 1 is to 3, we know ratio is the comparison by division or relationship between two numbers by division. So we can write 1 is to 3 as 1 by 3 for calculations. Similarly, 2 is to 6 equals 2 by 6 equals 1 by 3. 3 is to 9 equals 3 by 9 equals 1 by 3, etc. And 10 is to 30 equals 10 by 30 equals 1 by 3. Here the ratios are the same. If we take 1 is to 3 equals 2 is to 6, then we can write it as 1 by 3 equals 2 by 6. And by cross multiplying, we can see both are the same. So we can say if y1 and y2 are the values of y corresponding to the values x1 and x2 of x, then x1 by y1 equals x2 by y2, or x1 y2 equals x2 y1. Let's have a quick recap. Today we discussed a new topic, direct proportion through an example. Before winding up let's check how much you understood by doing an activity. Identify the situations which are in direct proportion from the following. First, if the number of individuals visiting a restaurant increases, earning of the restaurant also increases. Second, if more number of people are employed for the same job, the time taken to accomplish the job decreases. And third, the cost of fruits or vegetables increases as the weight for the same increases. That's all for now. See you all in the next class.